Killed it. Hey, everybody, welcome. I should turn this yeah. off because it's coming soon. Hey, I know, I know this guy, Todd uh, Downing. How are yeah. you, sir? Look at that. Oh, there. <laughs> so, uh, technical difficulties as as per usual. Yeah, we'll stuff, see right? Happens. Yep, yep, for sure. So, uh, my name's Aaron Montgomery. This is Todd Downing. You can find us over at rsuccessgroup.com. Which is yeah. up there, I'm assuming. Or there it is. Uh, it is now. It is now, finally. Yep. So good stuff there. Connie was the first one in. Connie, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Well, and uh, chat so I can see that. Yeah. Jerry, uh, plus it's Sunday. I'll get them all up there. You're all good. Perfect. Um, Facebook user, uh, here's the deal. If you're catching this from the Business Basic Group, you have to go over to streamyard.com slash Facebook. Even if you've already done this in the past, this is a Facebook thing. It just doesn't allow third-party services like what we're using here with StreamYard to uh, to show uh, people's names without their express consent. So uh, secret, again, secret. that's secret, secret. Yeah. So go to StreamYard.com/slash/Facebook, and uh, we'll we'll know what's what's up as uh, as <laughs> it says here. As it so, says. Yeah. Wade, hello, Becky, and uh, <laughs> Wade says, "Wow, that music. Yeah, that was kinda, nice." Groovin is what it's called. Groovin. So I was groovin. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, Facebook user, head on over to streamyard.com slash Facebook yo yo. Um, all right, cool. Valerie, Chuck, Maria, excellent, excellent. Good job. Thanks for checking in, everybody, on a Sunday. How's your weekend been, Todd? Uh, you know, not too bad. Uh, something new that I saw last night that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, have you had any of your Facebook feeds seen any of the local bands playing? So, you know, now that everything's canceled, you know, and the bars are closed and that, well, one of the, you know, the people that that was their extra income was people in the bands. Well, now they're getting together and they're playing in somebody's house or in the basement of the garage, or, you know, just how they were before. And they're doing the concert, uh, you know, or the show online. And then they have the a GoFundMe cool. or a little virtual tips thing set up. And it's kind of fun because they'll, uh, the one had it set up where they had each of their own screen. So they're each at their own house and they had somebody, you know, putting it all in there together. And it, it was kind of, it was kind of fun to see that, but it's, nice. you know, this is seeing a whole lot of different things open up for people and different ways to do things, you know, to still stay out there. So, uh, you know, I, every day you know, I'm finding something new. That's, uh, that's, you know, that's fun. You know, I, who would have thought that, you know, that yeah. people are going to, you know, just, Hey, we can just do this online and we don't need you anymore. So great. Yeah, for them. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's said. Uh, yeah, Martha says I've been watching those, Todd. It's great. In fact, uh, I saw. I didn't get a chance to check it out. But I saw Martha post something about. I think it was Vince Gill. She said was actually playing from the Grand Old Opry. Nobody in there, but they were just crushing it, the filling the the hall with with music. So, uh, Layla, greetings. Thank you for joining us, Terry. Appreciate you checking in, and uh, Stephanie, and. Uh, Nessa says, I've been seeing lots of DJs oh. doing virtual clubs. That's cool. Yeah. That's a great idea. I, I love got, that. Uh, we've got two people friends here that are DJs, and they're doing the same thing where uh, they're going live for a couple hours a night and just spinning, just having stuff play. You know, it's, it's, as I said, I think it's bringing, as much as it's separating people, I think it's bringing people closer together because, you know, you're getting that more intimate thing. It feels like, you know, you're right there with them and stuff. And I think, you know, anybody that's out there doing stuff is going to see that come back towards them and, um, uh, was on the backside when everything decides it's gonna it's gonna be fine and you know, we'll see when that is you know April fifteenth. April fifteenth. I'm still I'm still hanging hanging strong. Certainly lots of uh, stuff coming my way that's trying to 
bring that down, but I am not allowing that to happen. Okay. I am uh, going to keep that positive mental attitude and uh, you know, be, be, uh, if you dream it, you can, you can do it. So that's, that's what I'm going for. So. Yeah. And who knows, you know, like I said, like you said, I, I think that one of the interesting parts, in fact, uh, on uh, April 10th over on the two regular guys, uh, Terry and I are going to do a, a, just a host show. He and I talking, and we're going to talk about, and we're, we want everybody to come in and bring their feedback and share their, their thoughts. But we want to talk about what the landscape is going to look like after this is over. You know, what are some of the changes that are happening right now that might become, I don't know, permanent is probably not the right word, but what, what are the ultimate changes going to be for the landscape of business and, and, and people in general? So I'm um, yeah. looking forward to doing yeah, that. Great. One of the, one of the things, you know, sneak peek that I'm thinking of is I think you're going to see commercial property come way down because there's so many businesses now that, you know, big corporations that aren't doing anything at their, at their spots that they're running, you know, everybody's working from home. Well, yeah. if they can get rid of that, that cost of that ginormous overhead of, of, you know, leasing a space, they can give their employees a little extra bucks for it. And the employees that I've talked to that do it, they're like, you know, besides having to deal with my kids that are always wanting to do stuff and be there, like if, if I didn't have them here, this is way better than what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. You're still tied to it. But, you know, I, I think you're going to see a lot of that because I think some of them after it are going to be like, hey, we don't need this. And I don't think there's a whole lot of, you know, court systems that when it comes down to, you know, hey, we're, we're shuttering this to stay afloat, they're going to side with them on it. You know, I mean, yeah. I think what you'll see is a lot of, uh, people, you know, basically, um, oh, well, what's the what's the word I'm looking for when you, you push out payments past that? Right? Like our, I think what the mall is trying to do is nobody's going to pay their rent and then they're just going to extend your lease by two months, three months, whatever the process gotcha. is, you know, to, to still get around. Hey, we'll help you out during here. This is all we ask for you. So I think that um, and even if they try and say anything, that's going to be my suggestion to them is be like, hey, until everything is lifted, uh, why don't we do this? Otherwise, we're just not going to reopen. So <laughs> hey, I, I'm looking at how can I work this to my advantage? Can I get cheaper rent somewhere? Can I get out of stuff? Can I can I just move it all, grab the U-Haul and move it all back home? Uh, yeah. I just need it to be a little nicer. Uh, you know, we had a, it was nice out yesterday during the day for, you know, about an hour or two, uh, you know, 70s. But that wind and storm came through. And now today we got, you know, winds of 50 mile an hour. It's, it's crazy out there. Huh. Yeah, it's uh, been been a sunny day outside, a little bit windy here. I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'll, what the heck? I, I've just got a nice shirt on. I still have my mowing pants on here. So oh, I you're a <laughs> that shirt makes it look like you're wearing a backpack. I know it really does. Yeah, <laughs> it, when, yeah, for sure. It, it definitely. <laughs> but I'm not. It's uh, Payne Stewart. Now it's all good. So um, name drop. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, Heidi checking in. Sandy says, uh, no sound must be only me. Terry said that that uh, sounds a little low. Todd had a computer issue, so he's coming from his uh, his iPad there. But you're sounding okay to me here, so I I'm not sure. I think it's just where I have it set at because it's sitting on it. But it does look like I might be able to come back in because uh, everything's coming up. You know, you get that whole, hey, I'm doing stuff and, and we're doing here. And I was actually immersed in reading the book. And I look up and I had my alarm set for 10 minutes till. I'm like, oh, okay, let's go do this. And I came down here and I turned on the computer and... They get the windows is updating, you know, and it's, uh, you know, you know what, what would it say? Still waiting or whatever the hell. It yeah. Was. Yeah. So it's still, still waiting. It's still, still waiting. waiting. It's still waiting. And I'm like, so. I don't have time for this. And then now yeah. it looks like everything's coming back up. So then I should be able to just, uh, yeah. join in normally. There we go. That, that's all good. Um, so Janessa says, I'm finding my business is doing much better now that I'm home from the day job. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hearing a lot of that. I, I'm seeing people that are actually, you know, the, this getting an opportunity to focus more on their businesses or are doing, you know, able to do more and do great things. So Martha said, at least you have pants on. Yes, that's, that's a good point. Better than my PJ pants I had on the other morning when I uh, got up and, uh, you know, I, they're well, pants, right? They're pants are <laughs> pants, right? Renee well, checking in. Thank you. And uh, Catherine from Minnesota. Hello. Welcome. Appreciate yeah. you joining us. All right, Todd, let's, let's <laughs> we're, We'll clearly go over today because that's just, oh, yeah. it's a Sunday, Sunday fun day. You it's know? a Sunday. I got uh, I got cinnamon rolls to make after this. So uh, all right, there you go. Well, so let's. But we've got uh, quite a few questions here. So thank I you guys for for sending questions. All all wonderful stuff. We'll get to as many of these as we can. Um, the the one question that we held on. Were we still holding on that one? Uh, is Kelly in here? I can't see who's here. Uh, who's we'll, here. We'll, Kelly, if you're here, give us a shout out and let us know that you're. Otherwise, in. we'll hold that one off because yeah, we'll, we'll she's hold my go-to for that. Yeah, we'll hold and have Kelly's help, Kelly DeFreeze from Crystal Ninja. If you don't know who she is, you should go check check her out. Crystal Ninja, really cool stuff going on over there. All right, Todd, here's the first question. How do you guys manage it all? How do you schedule your day for max productivity with your life? Uh, 
pad and paper. I mean, you can, there's tons of ways to do it. We, you know, went over kind of a few different ones, you know, uh, whether you're doing it online, where you're doing it there. I try and make a list every morning. Here's stuff that needs to happen. I've really fallen out of that the last week because the world's not doing anything. <laughs> so why should I? I mean, I still have my list, but man, I'm really not holding towards it this, this past week. It was nice being able to sleep in. Uh, it was nice waking up with the kids a little later. It was nice eating breakfast at one in the afternoon. You know, it was, <laughs> it, it was nice. You know, I, I, if you know me, I love wearing, you know, sandals and slides and that. And all winter just kills me to have socks and shoes on and have pants. And so, you know, to, to be able just to, I haven't had socks on, you know, in a week now, it's been amazing. I feel so free. Um, people aren't judging you for drinking at 10 o'clock in the morning anymore, you know, because everybody's doing it. There's nothing better to do. Um, so I still try and make that list of here's things I want to do uh, as it comes in. Here's stuff I need to take care of, uh, you know, with us right now. We're going to the shop two days a week, so stuff comes in. Like today, um, we had orders come in from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and today. We'll go in there tomorrow. I'll get those taken care of, uh, and then and then go from there. And then I think we'll be back on Thursday in that. But I still try and keep somewhat of a schedule easy enough by just writing stuff down. Um, you know, an easy way just to go through there. Here's what it is, um, and just check things off as you go. Uh, when we're back in production mode, then it's then I'm really anal about that list of here's stuff I need to get done. I have the time blocked out in, in time hours. When that time hits, it's, hey, it's time to stop that, move on to the next thing. Otherwise that can drag on and on and on. And then, you know, the whole day's gone. You really haven't done anything. So that's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. In fact, I, you know, when, as I saw this question, yeah, I did, it's been, it was 35 weeks ago, Todd, if you can believe that, uh, when you came on small business Saturdays and we talked about hustle, finding time for your business. 35 and I, weeks ago. 35 That's weeks like ago. 36 is a, is a baby, right? Isn't that right? It's 36 I, weeks of baby. I've not had a baby myself personally, but... Um, <laughs> Neither have I, I think that's what it is. I think it's. I think it is too. Uh, sounds about right. So, uh, yes, yeah, so 35 weeks ago, you were on. In fact, I actually put this... Uh, here we go. So you can check check that out over there. If you just go to facebook.com slash aaronmontgomery.info, it's still there for right now. We're going to get that changed over to our success group. But uh, I ran into a couple of snags trying to make that merge last night. So <laughs> I, I got scared and stopped. So um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of warnings that I'm like, wait a second. I need it. And then, and then Will popped in this morning and said, did you do all the redirects? I'm like, redirects? Hmm. No. <laughs> what is this speaking of? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, all right. So uh, here, so we talked about that. I think that's one great way you talked a lot about the time management, blocking out your time and stuff like that. Um, one of the other uh, videos that I did on this that I think would be useful if you want to check it out is where did it go? Mastering your to-do list, which was about 12 weeks ago. And um so if you want to check that one out and what else, uh, there was one other one too. Ah, techniques for setting goals that stick. That was the other one that uh, nice. uh, I thought would, would be helpful for people. I, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things for me is, is that management of, of my time. And, and like Todd says, you know, kind of planning ahead and I've actually done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get rid of that one now. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We're back to the normal one. Yeah. One of the biggest challenges for me in that arena is, is again, just yeah, getting things planned out. I, I overextend myself. I commit to too much stuff. So, what I've been really trying to do is, is plan out my day. And actually, this through this last week, I've actually done a better job of it than I had been in the past. So, because to me, you know, I know that there's some challenging times, and and yes, I want to get back and and make sure I'm spending time with family and stuff like that. But to me, this is also the time to to set things up and, and to take advantage of, of the opportunities and, and really push forward. And, and what we talked about a couple of weeks ago and thriving in problematic times. And, and, you know, so I think there's a ton of opportunities and, and um, I've really enjoyed kind of, again, what we've seen, you know, people being creative, trying new things. And, uh, you know, I always love that stuff, love seeing you know, the, the DJ is doing these virtual events. You know, I'm super excited about next Friday. We're going to have a cocktail party on Zoom. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays it, out. It's it, be who knows? Who knows? I was talking to Terry about it today, and he's like, so how's this going to work? I'm like, no idea. Yeah, because, you know, a Zoom call with that many people, as you talk, it's going to flip the screen. Here's yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, we'll, we'll ask on. people, you aren't actually talking to the group to go ahead and mute your mic because it doesn't kind of pop up. But, uh, you know, we're going to just see how it goes. So yeah. um, it could be a total flop. 
and um, or it could be you know a complete uh, awesome time. And and we're just going to happen. Is we're right? gonna, it's going to so. get downsized, and it's going to be hey, this is going to be every Friday thing, and first twenty five or so because a hundred is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, so yeah, we're going to have some fun. I'm going to have a blast with it. All right, so I'm learning something here. I, I, I kind of knew this, but uh, the the actual details appreciated here. Baby's lungs are done in 36 weeks. Ah. Actually, technically 40 weeks is a pregnancy. Well, so. because you know, I do that whole four times. You know, nine is 36, so that should be right. But it's really like 10 months. You know, so yeah, yeah. it totally throws me off. Totally. Yep. So yeah, we're we're we're, we're all good. And uh, if you need to sign up, just go over to tworegularguys.com/party. And that'll get you the information. You just uh, fill in your information there and that'll get you the, it'll take you to the next page. It's got all the information on it. Plus it will send you an email, but I'm learning that nobody actually opens emails or gets emails from me. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm at a loss. You. <laughs> it is just me. I, I, I absolutely but know it's me. That will, Check uh, your spam folder. All of my emails are in your spam folder. How's the, uh, do you have that set up for the text messaging? Cause that seems to work. You know, that, that seems to, to work well enough. <laughs> well, I th I thought I had it set up for test me text messaging, but the thing I did with Eric yesterday, people were telling me they were getting texts in the middle of the show, and I did another test today, and it worked just fine on time for me. So, well, yeah, well, hey, you know, okay. we're trying things new. Sometimes things fail, and you just, just don't it. do it. Everybody it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, all right. So, let, yeah, let's let's uh, keep moving on. We're already at four seventeen. That's hilarious. Um, okay, let me get this next one up there, Todd. Hide it. We're gonna edit it. We're gonna edit. Just, edit. Oh, boom, boom. Do I get them there? There, yeah. Now okay. How do you store transfers? How long do they last? Uh, so it depends on the transfer. Um, most everything we order comes in, you know, the, the padded envelope. So we just keep it in that. Uh, and we've got. If we ever go back to the store. I'll take a picture of it. I know you, I've showed it in the past, but we've got a transfer wall that, as our stock transfers that we use for typical designs and that, they're just stored on there. Uh, we've got stuff on there that's a year, two years old with, uh, you know, with no issues that we still press just fine. Um, if it's anything that's long-term, uh, you know, those are ones are a job that we'll do um, one time for a customer here. And then, you know, six months on that. Yeah. That stuff just gets thrown back in the manila folder and then uh, put on the shelf and filed away until the next time we need it. But our stock ones, we just have lined up and uh, um, we made it or actually Corey's dad made it for us. It's like, you remember the old art, um, Art holders and uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where it was like yeah. you know things that are about like that big, but yeah. it was like twenty of them. Yep, that's what we have. We built one of those and we put it on there. Uh, it works out really well for us because when what we have it do is we have it labeled. You know, is here's A one, and then you can go the, the out on the floor and there's A one. So they just say, hey, I want this, and then you're able just to pull it and go from there. So cool. How, how long do they last? Uh, as far as storage that way, I mean, we've got some that are two and three years old that we haven't had any issues with. So okay. um, I, I don't. Honestly, know the answer on how long it should last. Um, if it's, yeah, because if you're having, if you're having stuff that long, maybe you shouldn't have ordered it. You know, maybe I, I don't know because uh, I haven't ran into that issue yet. But I know we've got stuff from when we first opened that was three years ago, and it's promo stuff that we have, and we still press it, and it works fine, no problem. Okay, who's your uh, friend over at six one three? I can't remember his name. Uh, Rick. We could probably bring Rick. Oh, we should sign Rick up for a show. Uh, Rick would love to come on to one of us. Rick Dahmer over there. Uh, he would be able to answer all of those transfer questions for us. And you know what? Okay. He'd be a good for, he'd be good for uh, two regular guys. We should, we should totally reach out to him. I'm Here sure he'll come on. Here we go. Here, and we, we've got somebody tuning in. Uh, uh, ENZ Print Co. Our Plastwell transfers are safe for at least five years. We test an early, early batch every year. That's awesome. Yeah. Good job. Cool. Thanks. Uh, ENZ Print Co. What's your, let us know what your, uh, uh, website is and uh, we'll, we'll get that posted up here too so we appreciate you jumping in there and helping us answer that question um and, and i don't have nearly as much experience with transfers so i'm going to uh, just save that for you todd that was perfect <laughs> i don't have anything to add so how about that <laughs> yeah, you always have something good to add yeah uh, all right I, I think i'm going to have something good to add here i hope um oh, but... what do we got? This one's good. I'm going to let you take the first stab at this, though. Some experts say we don't need a website until we have at least a thousand followers on our Facebook or and or Instagram page. Do you agree, disagree, and why? I disagree. 
uh, any because you, you don't need anything super fancy for a website, but you still want them to, to be able to find something to go and do. Um, you know, even the URL, just to have that to be able to direct them to your Facebook page. I, I think that's the, the most important thing is having that URL uh, to be able to send them somewhere. Whether it's to your page where they can contact you, and to, it's a one-page contact form, it's an Equid site, it's a WordPress site, to whatever. Um, having something for them to see that you know you're you're legit you know, is always a plus for any business. So uh, I would say yes. And I would say you start that as soon as you can, because the, you know, if you're waiting until you get to a thousand, then how do you stay in contact with these 999 prior to that? You know? So that's yeah. what I say. Go that way with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree hundred percent with Todd. In fact, I would almost go the other way and say that um, you need a website well before you need a Facebook or an Instagram page. Uh, mm. I, I, but I've, I've seen it done and I think you can do it because here, here's my take on it and, and why I say that is because y- you don't own anything that's happening on, on Facebook or mm-hmm. Instagram. So the second that they change their mind about something, same thing with Etsy. You know, if you've got all your eggs in that Etsy basket, the second that they change their mind about something, that's their right to do. I mean, yeah. I've, I know lots of businesses that put all their eggs into their Facebook basket and, um, you know, as Facebook continues to change their rules, they continue to um, fail. You know, they continue to yeah. struggle because, you know, they're having to spend more and more on ads and even that's not working quite as well. So it's it's definitely one of those things where, you know, again, I, I understand the, the need to have a Facebook page and an Instagram page because it's to drive your, your business, your marketing efforts. Right. But you have to look at it from a perspective of what it is. It is a marketing tool and a marketing tool only. So, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is not going to have any problem getting eyeballs on his website. Mm-hmm. You know, people are going to go to Facebook, whether you're sending them there or not. <laughs> you know, So what we need to do is we need to flip our mindset with that and realize that Facebook and Instagram are actually tools to get people to our properties, to our website. So, you know, to, to have to have an e-commerce site or a big, huge, you know, website, not 100 percent necessary, but you need, at least need to have a landing page, a, a way to collect the information, a way to get people to your call to action. Um, you know, so I'm seeing a lot of more one page websites. That's why I think Equid's doing so well is right. because it is a really nice well, you know, one page website. Else, that was something else I was going to say with Equid. One of the things that you can do is even if you have all these products and you're not sure of, you know, how to do it, because that's the kind of the book that I was in is, is how do we, how do we get this, you know, because of everything that we do, you know, on, especially on the print side. And that's why I've been trying to add more and more to it. But what I did was I created a single product and it was just called get a quote. So that way they could go on there and put your name, your phone number, your email, project, you know, type, whatever they needed. And that was it. Just get a quote there. So you at least got their information for it. At the top of it, you can have your information. You can have, you know, about us. You can have everything on there. And that's just, you know, one product store that's not costing you anything to do. So with that, yes, you can totally set that up. And that's easy enough to do. And I think that's something, you know, that us, we can hell, we can put it together for somebody in here. You send us the stuff, you're set. You know, it, it's pretty simple to, to do that. And what is going on with this? Okay. <laughs> now, well, since I brought the computer back, now you get all these things that are loading in the background. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's, uh, that's funny. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I agree with you there. I mean, for example, with, with MailChimp, you can get that all set up and you can actually make a landing page um, that, that you could host on your WordPress or wh- whatever, wherever you wanted to put it. And, and again, it's just that, okay, I'm interested in doing business with you. Now I go here, I upload my information to get a quote or whatever it is, and boom, there you go. So uh, good stuff there. Uh, Jerry said a little while back when I was lamenting about nobody getting my emails, uh, Jerry says she does get my email, so that that's good. Uh, so um, good stuff there. Joseph says, uh, but you don't own Equid either. As far as I know, you do because it's a it's a standard website that you would do because you can put it anywhere you want. It's no different than if you were to, to build your own and have it hosted, and they decide to get shut down. You know, it's it's kind of that along that same thing. Yeah. Unless you're running your own server with your own stuff on your own thing, I think it can happen that anybody can get really shut down and lose it. Yeah, so that's for where sure. You're yeah, no, I I agree, and and you might not own Equid as a platform, but unlike Etsy, where you know you're leaning on them to drive traffic to you or Facebook where, you, you know, you're, you're leaning on them to drive traffic to you, your own website. It's up to you to drive the yeah. traffic there. 
And um, but again, you need to be having that tool available for people to drive drive that traffic in. So um, good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Jason stuff, says. Hey. <laughs> good point. <laughs> if you are playing along at home, I do have that list somewhere. Oh, here. we got to post that. That's gonna. We have to have that posted before. Uh, before yeah, well, maybe we'll go our resources page here. I'm just going back to my notes here. Uh, so there's that. Good to go. Good stuff. And anytime I reference my dad, who is a CPA. Yeah. So those are all of the times to drink. Yeah. Um, yeah, so good, good stuff there. Uh, Jason says, I think the more places you have, the better for <laughs> yeah, your business. Uh, I'm going to need another beer. Uh, the more places you have, the better for your business. I totally agree with that. To me, it's just understanding and having the right mindset of, of which way you're driving traffic. Yeah. I've seen way too many people spend so much of their effort driving people to their Facebook page that that they're they're going the wrong way and, and and you should be using facebook to drive people to your email list website whatever so, um yeah the only way it suggests it says the only yeah. way you control all your content is host your site that, that, that's that's a, a true true statement there joseph and uh, he said that's what i meant so good good we're, we're all on the same page there uh facebook user again streamyard.com slash facebook if you uh uh, get a chance so we know who who is uh, bringing these comments. But I view a website to le legitimize what I've seen on ads away from content structured for social media. Agree with that 100 percent, too. Um, yeah. So Jeff says, so you mean Equit is an open source platform you can install anywhere? What not open source? Or I guess it is because you can go in and do your own coding uh, on parts of it and that, too, because I've been working uh, with a couple of people on trying to get there's there's one thing. If I can get that, then. Equid's going to be super amazing for me, um, and I'm working through that now. But from what I've seen so far, yeah, you can take it to plenty of different um, hosts to other platforms. So you know, whether it's your WordPress, whether it's um, uh, who else is your, your hosting thing. I uh, Google wherever you're running your stuff through an Equid, and it should pull the two together to say how to put it here, and it should be really good to go. Cool. All right, so uh, Honeybee, get me a yeah. bottle. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to. Uh, get my son to run back downstairs and grab me another beer. So. Right. Uh, Ren Renee says the Facebook user is uh, Mr. Joe Riss. So Joe, oh, Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe. Joe. There we go. All right. Uh, let's get to the next one here. Yeah, we are definitely going over today, Todd. Yeah, that's fine. Well, we don't have to answer them all. We got tomorrow. And that's then we true. Got, we got that's tomorrow. true. I'm going to leave that next one for, for tomorrow. So let Take me get one. this one, though, because I think we can go quickly through this because I don't actually have a... <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll even let you read this one. Oh, she did it. She totally killed her husband. She totally framed him. Tiger oh King, yo, come on. That guy is not smart enough. I mean, anything, if you don't know the premise of this thing. Uh, <laughs> is this, so it would be like spoiler alert or what? No, no, there's not. You know, any zookeeper, let's see, how do I put this? A gun toting, gay, redneck who is in the tiger distribution business. I mean, that's just, that's just gold for a show premise. And everything with this is the most amazing, amazing thing ever. Um, I just can't say enough about it. Uh, I think if you have six hours and 45 minutes of your time to invest in it, you sh certainly should seven episodes. They're about 45 minutes, 10 hour long. Uh, you will feel dirty afterwards. Uh, you will form your own opinions. Uh, it is amazingly good and amazingly bad all in one. Uh, and I really, if you, the thing is, I read this story uh, probably a year or two ago, I actually read the article on it. You know, I thought, oh, here's something that I was just going to glance through. Uh, and it totally turned into one of those half hour, 45 minute articles that you read and like, no, there's no way. This is not real life. This is like, nobody could have wrote this better. I mean, there is no way with everything that happens. Uh, if trash TV is good for you, yes, it is totally worth your time. Um, you know, there's just way, way too much. Uh, there's too many wow factors in this, and there's too many twists and turns to make you realize that you should. <laughs> what else are you going to do? You're sitting at home, you know, have a little fun. I mean, if there's any way to, you know, get your mind off of Corona, 
you know, it's a gay redneck zookeeper. I mean, like legit, it is the most, I can't say enough about it. it uh, we totally should have a watch party on it and, and it would be amazing just to hear people's responses. So if you yeah. haven't, uh, I look forward to hearing your response, but uh, it, yeah, is, Valerie, it is an unstoppable train wreck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, Valerie it, says, if I devoted, as, uh, if, if I was as devoted to my business as I am to watching this train wreck, I would be unstoppable. <laughs> right. So, it sucks. I, <laughs> <laughs> I do not, uh, I, I have not watched. I've not, uh, yeah. I don't even have Netflix. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> oh, man. I think that's a drink. It's, uh, sure, whatever. It's amazing. I mean, I just, <sighs> There's so many thoughts, and I won't give it away because you have to, uh, you have to, you have to watch it. You, you have to watch it. And we'll talk about it next week sometime. We'll pick out a show and, and get follow ups on it. And we talk <laughs> about it on, on Tuesday with Todd or something because it's just I got to hear from you and hear your thoughts and opinions on this because there's there's just so much to do with it, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me get back to this one. Well. Okay. Oops. Nope. Come on. There we go. When trying to go from craft to business, is it best to put your product in many sites or focus on just one? So to put your product on many sites, so put your product as many places as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's it. Yeah. I would put it as many places as possible because the more eyes that see it, the better chance of buying. And what's the, did we do that? And what's the numbers of it is, you know, if a hundred people see your things, how many people click on the link and then go there and it ends up coming down to what, like two or 3%, you know, that, yeah. like that. Yeah, the funnel. Yeah. You yeah. got, you got the funnel. Um, I have to go back to that, but yeah, definitely yeah, like that where it was under 10%, you know, yeah. Of, of if you're putting a hundred people in your funnel, you're going to get two sales or something like right. that. And so you, of course, the more people that can see it, the better. Uh, and a good thing about that is especially if you're sharing it a bunch of different places to various platforms, you start seeing what other people think. Some people in one, you know, area might really like it. And so, you know, hey, I should have hit that more. Other ones, you're going to hear crickets. So, you know, that type is not for that type of group. So, um, yeah, it, it's easy market research just to see what hits with what people go from there, you know. And a group full of guys on that, you probably aren't going to put, you know, sunflowers and unicorns. But if, you know, you do wrenches and car parts, you're, you know, you probably are going to hit it off better. So, uh, it definitely get as many eyes in front of it as you can. Yep. Uh, I agree with that. I mean, I think uh, trying to find new places. One thing that I've always suggested people do, especially as they're going from, from craft to hobbies, is uh, take a look at some of the, um, uh, what I call deal sites. Yeah. Uh, pick your plum, jane.com. Those are the two big ones that come to mind. Um, trying to think what other ones are out there. But uh, what's cool about that is you can post some stuff up there and and really get some good market research out of it like okay what are people what do people like and and there's really i mean you're not going to make a whole lot of money because the the, uh, the deal sites are taking a big chunk of the profit so to speak um they're gonna they're gonna charge you 25 percent to to do it but it's you know it's a focused it's a two-day they're bringing in all the traffic uh you know so you get new products up there and and see which ones people sell and that way you know what you got to focus on when you're putting it out on Facebook or wherever. Now with someone like Plum Aaron, um, with that, are you doing all the packaging yourself? So can you put in something to direct them back towards your original site? That's so, so they actually they actually have rules against that. that okay. You you could you're, you could put a packing slip in with your information and stuff on it, but you can't uh, do the be back okay. uh, codes. So though in fact i think i've talked about this but just to, as a reminder my wife uses that for weheart.biz and so her way around that that rule is obviously you've got their address that you've got to uh, mail the stuff to you don't get their emails or anything like that but what she does is she sends a not just to the people on the the, the that do the pick your plum stuff but everybody that's ordered she'll send a follow-up uh handwritten thank you note with that be back card in it. remind me uh because in on tomorrow's thing i will pull it up because i i know i, I know where my tin is because I, I hit it because it was for Corey. but there's some good taffy in there and i don't want it all to be taken by the kids so <laughs> it came special treats but i'm pretty sure that i have the um, thank you card with it so i can show that off because it was you know it was it was about what four or five days later that showed up so it was whoa what's this and oh and i think there was post-its in it too so yep. I mean, there was you know it was a, a cool little thing to, to get and 
Um, it was definitely a you know a welcome surprise. So I'll sure, yeah, yeah. So that's just a, a way to get around some of those, like I said, some of those beatbacks. But but that's a great place, you know, to so get it there. Um, you know, she's got stuff on Etsy. You know, she's got her own website. Um, you know, she's going to look into some more Facebook uh, marketplace stuff. So yeah, I, I think anywhere you can get that stuff out there. Just remember that some of those things, you know, like Etsy, you're being charged uh, a fee, whether you sell stuff or not. So, you know, just understand what your costs are going to be associated with those things before you uh, go too crazy, but um, good place to start for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Um, all right. Real quick here, Facebook user. Um, if, if you're seeing your comment with Facebook user up there, just another reminder, if you're joining us a little bit later, head over to streamyard.com slash Facebook and uh, give them a uh, give them permission to show your information. Uh, we're using a third party service called StreamYard. And so we can't see who you are unless you've given that permission. So if you'll head over again to streamyard.com slash Facebook. All right, um, Justin asks, is there an online shirt designer plugin that works with Equid? Um, you can have one custom built that would work with it. I personally, it's going to cost you money for it because uh, they can pretty much do anything and build anything that you need. But the problem that I think I have the most with online shirt designers is that it gives customers the power to decide what they want instead of us the power to tell them what they can have. You know, they can design this with all kinds of crazy placements and, and this and that. And, you know, in the end, it really, I think for me, creates more problems uh, as a finisher than it does for, you know, the, the customer. Somewhere like Custom Ink where they have the, you know, the backing to be able to do every different print location and, and this and that, and, you know, it's fine. But, you know, as a small one, sometimes it's just not worth it to do some of these prints. And, you know, here's a customer that ordered something and they're expecting it that way. And some of the things just can't be done. So um, I do believe that they'll allow you to, you can get with their, um, oh, I'm trying to think what they're called. Uh, they have a, their own co-design team, whatever that you, that will build out stuff for you. Uh, and so I'm sure that there, that there's something they could build out for you. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be cheap by any means. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, quick and simple. That just plugs in ready to go. All right. So Todd, we've got uh, a few questions left, but uh, we are actually 38, seven minutes into this. So um, we're over our time. So yeah, what do you think? We really should do? I got I, this one here. I'm totally bringing that one. Yeah. So here's okay. another one. Holy moly. This one I think is only like <laughs> this one's only like, what three or four episodes long. But if you want to understand the power of the internet and what you say can be held against you and just the power of the internet, and once you put something out there, it's out there. And if people want to find you, they will find you. It is just legitly that one is there's there's some parts in it that, uh, you know, if you're a cat person, it's going to piss you off. It, it legit is, and you probably want to turn your head sometimes, but you, then you can understand the power of the internet for anything. So I'll leave it at that. That's another one. Watch it. Uh, it crazy. But I think that one's only three, maybe four episodes. Totally worth <laughs> it in the afternoon or at night. Uh, that gets, like, out of five stars, like, 37, just because it made me realize how well and how crazy the internet is, you know, it, it's, 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 it's crazy. Aaron, if you want to watch it, I will tell you about it afterwards and then you can decide, but amazing stuff there. So. All okay. right. All right. Yeah. Yes, I, I will. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just have never not, not been the, t I don't know. I, it's the I don't watch TV. That's what I just it don't is. watch TV. Because both of these are, are documentary things. And those are, you know, what making a murderer when that came out uh, two Christmases ago, you know, that's the best thing for them to do is dump this stuff on us, you know, over a break, because then there's nothing else to do. And making a murderer comes out. I mean, oh my God, that one just was so stressful because I don't understand how, you know, oh, look, we can't find anything. And then, you know, a week later, now we find keys behind the cupboard that nobody looked at before when they were searching a house. Come on. He didn't do it. He wasn't smart enough. Well, let's get past that. You know, Wisconsin, get your crap together. Um, you know, <laughs> manage walk. Come on. You know, it's two years later. We're still going on about that. So. All right. Uh, the documentaries, those were those were the things that just sucked me in. And if you're yeah, I can tell. A story with I can it, tell. Oh. this is not a break, by the way. I'm just just throwing that out there. <laughs> no, it's, 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 there's no sports on. There's no nothing. I yeah. turned on TV looking for sports day, and I saw a virtual NASCAR race. They're racing <laughs> video games, and they're showing it on Fox in place of the NASCAR because uh, hey, yeah. the drivers, there's something to do. And I'm just like, am I really watching this? Is this what it's really come to? And and yeah, that's what it's come to, people. Uh, is that, uh, 
we're trying to find anything, you know, to, to just bypass the time. And uh, <laughs> I was reading and, and doing that, but uh, it was a, it was a, a crazy, a crazy thing. Uh, and in the documentaries, when they're good like that, you know, uh, I'm a sucker for a good documentary that has the crazier, the better, uh, you know, if, because then I, sometimes I'll look at my life and be like, you know what? Yeah. So the Rona happened and I may lose my storefront and I might have to start over, but Jesus, I'm not like this crazy, eh? Come on. You know, it, really makes, it feel good TV. It makes you realize that you're nice. better off than some people. So yeah. uh, I, I totally uh, am down with it. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, Mayra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not TV, it's documentaries. <laughs> yeah, it's all the same thing. <laughs> Terry says, I love the virtual NASCAR. Um, oh, my God. That's going to be on the cheer moms. Oh, I'm gonna get sucked into that because those women are crazy too. <laughs> oh, right, well, well, you gotta watch *Making a Murderer*. That one is legit. Like, like I could be a cop, you know? Like, just <laughs> like they go to trial and some stuff the captain says, and you have a picture, and it's like, oh, you know, when you, it's just oh, the stuff that happens in it. And he maybe possibly did it, but man, there is. There's just way too much pointing the other way, and then that's what it usually is. Any of the good documents involves somebody who has. Who, who is out there is their own person. And to me, it feels like they've gotten taken advantage of by the system. And <laughs> I mean, you know, when, when the government tells you you're either with so-and-so or you're with the government decide, what are you going to do? You're not going to go against the government. They'll crush you. So of course you're going to take them. So there's intimidation right there. Come on. But you know, it's, uh, I get, I get, uh, it get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can see that, man. You're passionate Actually, about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so Ryan's I'm checking in. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, um, I think that uh, about covers us for today. Yep. So we'll be back tomorrow, same uh, same time. Pro my, uh, I got the interview tomorrow that was supposed to be from 3.30 to 4.30, which has now got moved from 4.30 to 5.30. So you want to shoot for like 3 tomorrow? Does that work? What's your schedule look like tomorrow? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure that out. I'm not sure what my schedule looks like right now. So we'll we'll uh, we'll, yeah. we'll chat after this and uh, yeah, then we'll figure it out. So if we did, you know, a 15 minute one tomorrow, so we get one question in tomorrow, we'd be good to go, uh, and uh, and then we'd be fine. But uh, you know, man, some you might have some passionate question on here that's going to take you know all of it through there. And, and we'll I, I see that. So yeah, but keep those questions coming. But yeah. Todd, uh, Todd Renee asked if you wouldn't mind uh, if you could really need to learn to kind of open up a little bit and tell us how you really feel. I mean, start at 10 <laughs> by four <laughs> o'clock. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you have some questions for us, make sure that you're going to right down here, our success group.com slash QA and uh, put those questions in there. We've got some more questions for tomorrow, but uh, just keep those coming. Um, Again, that can be about TV shows. That can be about whatever. We're, we're here to commune with you guys, have some fun, but also share some information too. Um, we've got some really good questions that I'm seeing here that I'm looking forward to answering tomorrow. Uh, it's talking about social media, talking about business plans, uh, sublimation, you know, so. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll get this tomorrow yeah. afternoon, Tuesday. We got Tuesday with Todd, which we're going to kind of expand on Aaron's uh, clarity talk from yesterday. And then we've got training on Wednesday. So, you know, we've got a, a fun-filled week this week, and I can't wait you know, to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, Martha says 15 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that uh, we're now going on 45 minutes. So, uh, well, you know, uh, keep it a minute. Todd, you can't keep it to 15. <laughs> you know, I, I could. I, I got it. I would. I, I, that almost sounds like a, a, a bet that I can't. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll do that. If I have to unplug this, I'll set a timer and shut it down. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, what well, happened to the cookie show? Well, that's something I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, we've come to find out that the internet is horrible in our in, in the kitchen where I need to be. Uh, and so, in fact, I was talking with uh, uh, Renee's husband this morning, Mark, about some different hotspots I could probably try and see about getting something in that area because it's been horrible. Uh, I, I've tried a couple different things because we've done, man, that that's the other saving grace for that pressure cooker. I mean, you get one of those and you can get me a pork loin done in an hour. I'm digging that. Yeah. And then uh, we've done a lot of fun stuff with that this week. And like you said, we're going to do cinnamon rolls here tonight. So we'll see how it works out. So, sounds great. Yeah. Renee says you can't drink all day long if you don't start in the morning. Right. I mean, I mean, what's the earliest you've ever drank, Aaron? Like not from the night before and carrying through. Like, what's the earliest you started in the morning? I mean, I think it was like five. You know, 
Uh, six. So, uh, yeah. But, and the, the, I don't know, best part, the crazy part was this was years ago. So, uh, <laughs> the crazy part was we closed the bar and then ended up the bar opened at six. So we ended up back at the bar at 6 a.m. The, the intention was to uh, get our credit cards back because we were supposedly had other things to do, but uh, we got sucked in and uh, and stayed until about noon and then went to the party. That was, that was a continue through. Like when you woke up and you're like, I'm going to start drinking. It was, it was five. It was for bus trips. Like for here, hmm. we're you know about three hours from Chicago. So when they do a Cubs bus trip or they used to do Bears bus trips before they built the stadium. So you'd leave here at six, you know, and you'd meet up with friends at five down there and you'd start drinking beers and you're pounding those all the way up there. So you have a, a good time when you're up there because one, you know, you're, you're there. Uh, you don't want to spend $4,000 on a beer. So you're going to drink as much as you can on the way up there. <laughs> and it, it's kind of the same thing for Wrigleyville is just walking around there. You know, you got to definitely pre-drink for that. So I put a couple bus trips together where, you know, we had to, we told people to get there by 5.30. Uh, bus usually showed up at, at 5.45, but I'm handing out mimosas at 5.30 in the morning. Like, come on, let's get this party going. Mimosa shot, what do you want? That's the only way you can get on the bus. <laughs> if you want to get on the bus, we're refunding money because we're like, this is what it's going to be. This is a drinking bus. We're going to have fun with this. Uh, the last one I did was not a drinking bus. We made it to the Oasis, which is about the halfway-ish point. Uh, and, we, you know, I had, I had tied one on good. I think we had already, we uh, maybe half, three quarters bottle of Fireball gone uh, <laughs> between like six, two, four, six, eight of us. And uh, we went off to McDonald's to get food because, you know, Big Macs at, at you know, at a decent time are always good. And we get back on the bus and I was told uh, that it's being too loud and asked if I could be quiet. Wrong thing to tell Ty. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the trip was even more fun. I'm glad that <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that most of the stuff that we do is virtual. I'm pretty sure you would kill me. So oh, I, uh, it was I used to think I was pretty good at this whole drinking thing back in my day, but uh, that was many moons ago. So. <laughs> well, the, best, the best part of that story was we did this for my neighbor's 30th birthday. Um, we get up there and I said, we're pounding drinks on the bus on the way up there and, and we get up there and it's a beautiful day and we keep pounding more drinks and we just have a, a great time and we go into the stadium uh, and before the first pitch she throws up on her husband so <laughs> they had to leave the stadium oh, uh, boy. couldn't find the bus didn't have her uh, id so they couldn't get into a bar for her just to sit down so that so the rest of us just didn't have a fun time while they walked around trying to find a bus so uh oh man they, you know, sometimes it just it just happens but uh, it does it does hey, all uh, right party with me is party with anyone i guess yep yep good times with todd i love it i love it all right todd thank you sir we will um yeah we'll figure out the time here shortly and uh, get that uh, posted up for tomorrow yep uh Either it's going to be a little earlier in the afternoon at three-ish or maybe after. So maybe oh, a yeah. little bit maybe later yeah. tomorrow night. I think it's probably going to end up needing to be later tomorrow. Six four, so. yeah, if that's 4.30 or 5.30, 6 o'clock, which I yeah. should be in and out of there by then. Okay. So yeah, 6, 6.30, something like that. Yeah, Marshall's normally pretty uh, timely. So I'm sure. Not like us. You know, no, no, no. Mark, <laughs> Mark calendar is like a clockwork man. That guy's a machine. So yeah, like, <laughs> Mark Mark if you're uh, wondering who we're talking about, but uh, all right, cool. Todd, thank you, sir. Cheers. Um, yep. Go the opposite way. Oh, you I was going the right way. There it is. Thank you, thank you guys for joining us and uh, we will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one.